Hello beer tubers and welcome to the next episode of Cooking with Beer with the Master of Hobbits. Today a beef dish because I know I like the some of you probably don't like seafood too much and this is actually a classic Danish dish. Um, it's called Gamldes Oxestag in Danish which is like an old style beef roast, beef pot roast. And this is a, a pot chock roast or bleh, chock pot roast and you need well usually it's say 200 grams per person. Yeah, come around only two people, but whatever. This is a small one. And uh, then you need 800 grams. 800 grams. Eight. Oh, shit, it's bigger. Then you need some beans. No, you can't. Some green beans. The lighting isn't that good. Some potatoes, and then uh, for for cooking the beef, you need some stock cubes, a dark beer, and since it's Christmas time now, we're using a Christmas beer. Whatever you have of leftovers of like onion and stuff like that in your fridge, use that for making the gravy for this. Uh, we have some celery, we have some garlic, uh, some bay leaf, and some black peppercorns. But if you have stuff like carrots and onions and, and stuff like that as well, that will work greatly for the gravy too. Let's get to the cooking. So now just roughly chop your vegetables. And like for the celery, you can and especially like onion and stuff like that too. Just leave leaves and all that stuff on there because you're going to filter all that out because it's going to add a lot of flavor. Same with the garlic cloves, just crush them like this. So time to brown the meat. Whoa, steaming hot pan. Yeah. This is margarine. You can use that. Or you can use just like cooking oil or uh, like butter, something like that. And then what you need to do now is brown the meat. And here they come in these small, uh, they're stringed. And that's just to keep the shape of the meat because it's going to be cooking for a while. So just drop it in there. And then stir it on a high heat. And don't worry about seasoning the meat because the meat is going to be cooking in all the juice from like the vegetables and the stock and the beer. That will be plenty of seasoning. So make sure you brown your meat on all sides. So now that we're done browning this, the roast, we're going to add the beer. And you need 12 ounces. So we're just going to add half of this because this has half a liter. And then you add some beef stock, about 250 milliliters, just so it's covered in the bottom. It doesn't need to be completely covered. You add your veggies, and we have the garlic, a little bunch of black peppers, and a couple bay leaves. And these are going to give a lot of flavor to your gravy. Just cover it with a lid, and Depending on the size, this one will need about one and a, this is almost 800 grams. It'll need about one and a half hour. But if you have a big one, like the last time I did this, you need to cook it for at least two hours just to get it nice and moist. Just make sure that when this gets to a boil, you turn down the heat so it's on a very low heat. And then just leave it to simmer and you can go and do about your business and just do the waiting game. So the roast is done simmering now. It's been simmering for a while and it smells awesome right now. So cover it in tin foil. Now all the, the celery and garlic and all that, you need to get that out of there. So you don't want that in your gravy. Same goes for peppercorns and the whatnot, bay leaves. But now we're about to make what's called a yoning. This isn't a, I don't know what you call it, but it's instead of making a roux and then making your gravy with that. What you do is you get some flour, this is about two tablespoons. And then you pour in cold water just so the flour is about covered and um, you put a lid on. It, it needs to be a container with a lid. I forgot to mention this in the start of the video. But, and then you just shake it until it turns into like a little bit of a thick mixture. You have the leftover liquid here bubbling now, boiling. So what you need is to add your kind of flour water mixture into it. Like that. And then you whisk and you whisk and you whisk. Now this is how you make the gravy in the traditional Danish manner and then you keep stirring. But since we have a lot of gravy in here, we're gonna probably need a little more of this liquid. But just keep whisking and take a little break, let it heat up and you keep whisking again. And that's how you do it. And as you can see now, the gravy's got, it looks a whole lot more thick. So you turn off the heat and just let, leave it be and now you're gonna uh, blanch, I guess, the, the, the beans or the green beans. Also here, I forgot to put that on camera, but season to taste with salt and pepper. So we have boil, boil it, so boiling salt and water, and we're going to bring these frozen beans. Now, I like them um, just blanched, 
so they still have some crunch. The beans are done now, I just tried one, and it's nice and hot, but also nice and crunchy. And that's how I want them. Traditionally, you will boil the shit out of them, so they're gonna be all mushy. But I don't want my green beans like that. So here it is, traditional Dansk Gammeldansk Oxestai. And it kind of looks a little bit weird and boring, but what makes this dish so awesome is this stuff. The gravy. The gravy is the best in the world. This is actually my grandma's recipe. Gravy is very savory and you just get all the flavors from the meat like exploding in your mouth. <laughs> just kind of like yeah, pulled, yeah. pulled beef. <laughs> but this is a traditional Danish dish. Usually the reason why you cook the beef for this long was because it was be, would be really cheap meat. So you'd need to cook it for a long time. Okay. It's a good pairing, but the beer is too hoppy and bitter. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I think the other one that we used for cooking would have been better because it was more mild. So I'd say something like this, a roasty dish or a hearty dish like this. With a traditional yeah. old ale or... In yeah, or English strong ale. But it's a really nice dish. Definitely try and make a traditional Danish dish. Try and make this one. I know this has been a kind of a rushy, weird episode, but you guys have been <laughs> really wanting another one. <laughs> like, I got so many emails about it. People really dig this. So... Next one will not be as rushy, and it might be a dessert, actually. So, see you guys in another Master Pops Cooking with Beer episode.